this is Marco. Marco's story is that he was born in Niche in southern Serbia. By the age of 17, he published a novel. And since then, he's traveled to France, and he's traveled to India, and he did all of those things without ever setting foot in an airplane. This is Johanna. She's from Copenhagen. Her story is that by the age of three, she sailed around the world with her family. <laughs> and recently, she has been given awards for a documentary film on oral poetry in Yemen. She filmed this on location while wearing a burqa. Oh, excuse me. This is Luke. This guy's got a lot of stories. He's from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and he prides himself on being able to ride anything on legs and drive anything on wheels. And just to prove it, he rode a horse across the Mongolian steppe. So this is what they all have in common. And that is my couch in Heidelberg. And uh, I have met all three of those people in, live in the flesh as part of couch surfing. So the idea of couch surfing is real simple. You join the site, you create a profile, and let's say you want to take a trip somewhere. You want to go to Athens, you want to go to Auckland, you want to go to Antananarivo. It's in Madagascar, and yes, you can. So what you do is you go onto the site, you search for people in the place that you want to go who are offering couches. And you write people who seem interesting, one of them hopefully writes back and says, yes, I have a couch available at that time for you. And then when you arrive at your destination, you have a friend waiting for you, waiting to greet you, who can show you their town through their eyes. So you don't have to run around and check off sites that you're supposed to see. You get, to, you get a, not necessarily a tour guide, but you get to experience the place the way the people who live there experience it, for better or for worse. Instead of going out to an overpriced restaurant, you and your host, you can sit together, you can cook together in your host's home, you can share each other's cuisine of your, of your respective countries. If you can't cook, uh, you can just demonstrate your country's prodigious dishwashing skills. <laughs> also appreciated, also appreciated. If you can't travel, if that doesn't make sense for you, if you don't have the time or the money, then one thing you can do is open your home to people. This is what I do mostly, because I also got to work. And this way, the whole world comes to you. I've hosted people from over 20 countries, including those three. Even if you don't want to open your home to people, if that seems a bit weird to you, or if you haven't cleaned that day, not that that would ever happen to me, uh, <laughs> you can be active in the local couch surfing community right here in Mannheim. There is a couch surfing community. They meet every uh, two weeks at uh, Gaspi Bernstein. And uh, we were just met each other. We just, uh, excuse me, we just met up last night. And there were people there from literally all over the world. There was me. I'm from the US. Obviously, lots of Germans. We had somebody from India. We had somebody from Egypt. We had somebody from Colombia, et cetera, et cetera. Now you like my talk. Uh, so. One thing that might be weighing on your mind is, is this safe? And it's an obvious question, but the answer is overwhelmingly yes. Um, there have been over 2.5 million couch surfings since the site started, and almost all of them have been completely safe. We can't weed out all of the bad apples, but we do a damn good job. We have an identity verification system. We have a system of references. So once somebody stays on your couch or you stay on someone else's couch, you write a reference and say how it was. Um, we also have something called a vouching system. This is a way of designating somebody as being particularly trustworthy, like your, your mom or something. I hope. Uh, now, just one final story. And that's about, uh, just to show you how couch surfing can work. And it's about Diana. Uh, she is a couch surfer from Germany, and she hosted two girls from Hong Kong. Uh, those two girls arrived at her place, and being a good German host, she uh, offered them immediately, offered them something to drink. And the girls refused. And Diana found this a bit strange, but whatever. Later on, she offered them something to eat, 
And the girls refused again, and Deanna found this again a bit strange, and then she thought about it. You know, because surely they must be hungry or at least thirsty, right? But in the back of her mind, she remembered another Chinese couch surfer telling her that in China, it's actually customary to refuse something the first two times it's offered. Well, Deanna realized what the problem probably was, and then she went right up to these two girls from Hong Kong and spoke about it openly, directly, but politely, and said, hey, do you guys really want something to eat? I understand it might be different in your country, but I'm really offering. And yeah, it turns out the girls were really hungry, and everybody was happily ever after. So that's just a small story, um, but I think it really illustrates what can happen if you just speak openly but tactfully with people. You can overcome actually a lot of cultural differences, and it's just one of all of the stories that happened as a result of couch surfing. I mean, I got my own. That's how I've met people like Johanna and Marco and Luke that you saw at the beginning of my presentation. Uh, I would like to invite you now to come and write your own stories, and just as the website says, help create a better world one couch at a time. Thank you.